Syracuse. On the island of Sicily, the 3rd century BCE. Here dwells Archimedes, one of the most famous Greek mathematicians. The son of an astronomer, Archimedes spent his youth learning from the best teachers, in Alexandria, the main center for Greek culture at the time. We've all heard of Archimedes' famous streaking incident, through the streets of Syracuse, while yelling Eureka. But what brought it about? It's impossible to know for certain, but the story goes that the tyrant king of Syracuse, Hiero II, wanted to know if a crown that was built by one of his artisans was fully made of gold, or if the artisan added other materials, keeping the extra gold for himself. Hiero II couldn't find a way to examine the crown without damaging it, so he asked a slew of experts to test it. Archimedes was one of these experts. After several weeks of pondering, the befuddled Greek went to the bath and took a dunk in the tub. Immediately, the answer hit him. He noticed the water would rise and fall, depending on how much of his body was submerged. Also, the deeper he was in the water, the less his body seemed to weigh. With a revelation that would lead to what we now know as Archimedes' principle, the Greek thinker leapt from his tub, running through the streets, yelling Eureka, Eureka, meaning, I found it, I found it. But how does Archimedes' principle help us find the contents of the crown? Taking an amount of gold equal to the weight of the crown should displace the same amount of water. Yet Archimedes found it was different. This meant the artisan did indeed use faulty material in the crown, most likely silver, which weighs much less than gold. He was even able to tell the king the exact amount of gold that was missing. Archimedes was also used as a defensive genius for Syracuse, during the Second Punic War. The Romans already had control of central Italy by the mid-3rd century BCE, but also took over Sicily in 241 BCE. In 218, the Second Punic War began, and three years into the conflict, under pressure, the new king Hieronymus, grandson of Hiero II, favored an alliance with the Carthaginians over the Romans, most likely as a result of the Battle of Cannae, which saw Roman forces meet with devastation. This decision would be foolish, as Rome then attacked Syracuse. Archimedes was used to design innovative defenses against the Romans. He would improve their catapults, with better range and accuracy. Cranes would reach across the sea and drop boulders upon incoming Roman ships. There was even a giant claw, that would plummet around a ship, and with the help of pulleys, raise it high into the air, tearing it to pieces. There was speculation that the inventor also developed a type of heat ray, taking the sun's power, and through mirrors, directing it onto the enemy boats to cause fires, but we can't confirm that actually happened. The Roman commander, Marcus Claudius Marcellus, was demoralized by the failed attacks, but in 212 BCE, the general noticed a weak spot in the land facing defensive structures, after a diplomatic engagement. Attacking at night, and some say during a Greek festival, the Romans struck, and sacked Syracuse. Art was stolen, and people slaughtered. Marcellus wanted the genius Archimedes taken alive, so sent his guards to capture the prodigy. Once they found him, the 75-year-old engineer told them to leave him be, as he was in the middle of his craft. That insult would unleash the guard's fury, and moments later, one of the greatest minds in history was dead. Having approximated pi, formulated the law of the lever, and with Archimedes' screw, still in use today, the master mathematician and engineer, Archimedes, is regarded as one of the most brilliant minds that ever lived. Thanks for watching Made in History. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see more videos.